सर हम ऑडिबल टू द लास्ट ओके सो लिटिल डिफरेंट आई एल ट्राई टू फिनिश इन गिवन टाइम ओनली बट आई एल एड समथिंग एक्स्ट्रा टू दिस अपार्ट फ्रॉम वॉट इट इज वे फ्रॉम येस्टरडे ऑन वर्ड्स वी आर टॉकिंग अबाउट रिप्लेसिंग सिंगल यूज प्लास्टिक फर्स्ट माई submission is let us understand the strength and weaknesses of each sector and paper has a lot of strength can you look at the strength and try to find out some other place where you can play better you can go on looking at that space but can we see other space where you can have a good margin you can play with the margin play with your strength so that is where i just wanted to see you concentrate there are low very low hanging fruits and if you can catch that that can give you strength so uh, one of the things which i was uh, looking at is now if you look at the fruits and vegetable market in india or even cut flower market in india i am giving a couple of state case studies which were worked with the paper industries and how that can be a very very useful proposition in terms of marketing so as you know uh, if you look at the um, uh, cut flower market and the export is increasing with the cagr of around 19.5% and it's very huge and if you look at the basic issue what happens bangalore is a major hub for export of uh, rose flowers and majority of the flowers are exported from there but the challenge there is if you take the flowers and generally they packed it into the corrugated board box or wrapped around it and stored at 4 degree once you do that in 10 to 12 days it can stay but lot of times there are challenges in terms of reaching in that particular time and marketing so these people came to us to see whether we can have some solution and the simple solution of just looking at it we have developed the same material you take a paper on the paper we have incorporated bioactive compounds and these bioactive compounds will not cost you much it cost you in few paisas and these bioactive compounds can increase the self life of the uh the cut flowers from uh, 12 days to 18 to 20 days so that is where you uh, look at it they are basically a simple paper base uh there is no uh, uh we can say um, biodegradable materials there is no paper based based material uh, i'm sorry uh, plastic based material they are chemical free no chemicals used then you will have this is directly coming into the product now you look at this the application of this can be extended to fruits and vegetable and you imagine the retail stores roadside vendors you see you go to the retail store morning you go fresh vegetables in the evening it is sold at 50% discount because in, by the evening it gets spoiled and if you are able to intervene this with a paper and little incorporation of this you can double or triple the shelf life of the product and imagine the market so this will be huge market so these are some of the things which you can maybe double or triple uh, the shelf life of the uh, product so how it is done is a natural extracts put it down to craft paper or any paper for that matter i am not going into details it is not a paper dependent it is a basically a bioactive compound this is impregnated and just that becomes a freshness keeper and this freshness keeper you just keep along with the flowers or fruits and vegetables it extend the shelf life how does it does see look at this how it does you see this is the roses and then if you take the roses just wrap and we are not doing anything if you look at the export they use the same thing we are incorporating bioactive compound in the inner layer that's all and once that is done your job is done so you can extend the shelf life of this product so from um, 12 days it can go up to 20 days and what we have done see uh, there is a problem taking something from uh, the lab to land we do very excited we do some experiments in the lab and then you say it fails when it goes to the land so what generally we do once we do proof of concept we set up the same experiment in the factory and then we do the test marketing also so we have done this uh, and this can be used for across uh, uh, categories it can be uh, for the wholesalers can be uh roadside vendors a domestic uh, floriculturist and all that it can go so now um look at the field level trial we have done this at the field level also these are the industries so that means 
for you we are giving the ready made market also we have contacted this many people across india uh, including say uh, in and around bangalore and also from pune we have done this experiments there we have may ask them to do the export trials also and then the output is uh, quite good and they are, they are very happy so we have now technologies we have published you can uh, look at the publications also you will get a, a fair idea we have patent also and these are the uh, things where you get something as a uh, value uh, value added products now this is in research terms we call it as a technology readiness level if you just do the proof of concept it is working in my lab so we call it as technology readiness level of 3 and 90% of them from 3 taken to 7 8 or 9 uh, it fails now what we do when we do hand holding with the industry we take it to 6 level or 7 level now this is at level 6 that means we have done a sort of factory level trials but if you do actual export trials for a long number of times then it becomes a sort of a full proof technology where it can, it has a viability now um, this is and uh, coincidentally the same technology just one month back was released by uh, his highness uh, on the same place so this is uh, well received uh, across the sector now similarly on the similar line uh, this was active what you call in packaging terms as active packaging system you are incorporating something and you are extending the shelf life of the product now we call it as a smart systems in smart systems what you are doing you are trying to communicate to the consumer what is happening with the product so this is another additional step where paper can be used for that purpose so as you know if you take uh, a classical example is uh, pasteurized milk if you take pasteurized milk after pasteurization milk you are supposed to store at 4 degree but generally it doesn't happen always it put it on the open trucks and it is transported and then in uh, some cases what happens expiry date is for next day you try now if you want to try expiry date is next day but the one day early the milk gets spoiled because it is exposed to high temperature similar thing happens to the meat also you will see in the meat business most of the people who eat the meat earlier was only holiday meat eaters because you have to go to the butcher place and then freshly butchered meat you get it and then consume working day you don't have time to go you don't have trust that somebody which is packed it will come to you but now the things are little changing here to build the trust whether meat is fresh or not this is an indicator developed which will tell you what is happening in the meat inside and then paper is the main uh, thing which we are uh, trying to use it here this is basically first if you understand how meat spoils uh, this is basically you see take any meat product and if it is spoiling you will see it's that smell that is basically the total volatile uh, base nitrogen the amount if it exceeds a particular level you will say that meat is spoiled so if it is within that level so we are taking that as advantage that is number 1 number 2 the regulation says the microbiological count if microbiological count goes beyond that particular level it cannot be consumed so taking these two uh, components into account we have done i am not going in the technical details but understanding how much time and how much uh, uh, um, temperature it uh, stays we understand and what you call it is uh, activation energy of the spoilage of meat that means take an example of milk i'll give because meat is a lot of you may not be eating milk if you take pasteurized milk if you store at 38 degree it spoils in 4 hours if you store at 27 degree it spoils in 6 to 8 hours keep it at 4 degree it stays up to 7 to 2 hours so this is a basic kinetics of the spoilage of milk and we have done that experiment n number of times similarly for meat also if you keep meat at a different temperature the spoilage time is different so looking that kinetics what you call it is activation energy of spoilage of meat and with that activation energy we try to link with the indicators uh, and uh, you will get these sort of things where you will see uh, you can have any color combination and here the dyes what you are using lot of times most of the dyes the issue even with paper is if you use the synthetic dyes and some of them are carcinogenic in nature and stabilizing and getting a natural dyes is a challenge and we have succeeded and we have patented this also 
this dye as a natural dye which you can use to see the change in color. So that is where you have advantage. You will have uh, see there are a lot of time temperature indicators globally, but they have disadvantage. Number one, they have already pre-activated. That means your storage conditions. You have to keep it minus uh, one degree or minus ten degree or uh, eight degree low temperatures. You cannot use in normal conditions. But here, what you have done, it is not pre-activated. The moment you want to put it on your product, it can be meat, it can be milk, or it can be any product, even idli batter. At that particular point of time, when you are pasting, you activate it, and you can store it at any point of temperature, and then it interacts and give you the spoilage indication whether particular meat is spoiled. So these are some of the experimental details. I am not going in details, and that is what I just wanted to show. This is where uh, you see you can have any color combinations. Uh, this is fresh, and how it goes, and when it changes the color, you can you can tailor made any color if you want, green to red or red to yellow or whatever color combinations you want, you can do it. So with this, thank you so much. I am in time. Well within time, sir. Well within time.